Pilot's line of Ido Shizuku inks just released three new colors. In turn, they'll be retiring Tsuyukusa, a light blue, Tsukushi, a brown, and Inaho, a wheat color. And if you like any of those inks, you may want to stock up on them. These new colors are Hana Ikada, Hotarubi, and Suigyoku. I'll also be talking about Sailor's new line of inks, but between all these Japanese names, it gets pretty confusing. Hana Ikada should just be called Light Coral Pink, and Hotarubi should just be called Weird Muddy Yellow Green Color, and Suigyoku should be called Almost Shinryoku, which is already in their lineup. Now I know I sound like I'm kind of dinging on Pilot's Ido Shizuku ink, but that's not the case. I consider Ido Shizuku ink some of the best ink in the world. And this bottle here, Tsukiyo, I've had it and not splashed it around or wasted it and I'm almost done with the bottle because I consider if your pen won't work with Tsukiyo, you should get rid of your pen. So I hold Ido Shizuku ink to a higher standard. I got the three inks in a set of three 15 milliliter bottles and it was about $20. One of my initial worries was that the pink Hana Ikada and especially the yellow green Hotarubi would be hard to read if you used it in like a fine nib. Even looking at the label it was hard to get the camera to focus and hard to read the Hotaru B in dim light. So instead of just writing random words or doing swatches, I wanted to show you what it looked like in, in action. The smaller writing is with a sailor medium nib, and then these thicker lines here are made with a Pilot Parallel 4.5, just so you could see it with like more ink. I felt like this was surprisingly readable. I didn't have any problem reading at all with this medium nib and it actually it looked pretty nice. This is kind of a corally light pink, not just a straight pink color. This was written on old Tomoe River paper and then I used Takasago Premium Bank paper and it looked very readable too. These splotches here didn't do any heavy shading and did no sheening whatsoever. This is on Graffilo paper and it had maybe just a little bit more shading and was still very readable. And the chromatography was a straightforward pink with just a little bit of yellow to give it that kind of coral edge. It's a pretty straightforward ink. And this is Suigyoku, which is in a soft, fine, medium nib and you can see it's very readable, very clear. And then when I used a Pilot Parallel for the underlined part. This is on old Tomoa River paper. This is Takasago Premium Bank paper and here on the swatch is a little bit of red sheen. That was about the only sheen I saw. A little bit more shading than the pink ink and it's very clear, very readable. And all three inks wrote very smoothly. And this is on Graffilo paper and I got the most shading on Graffilo paper. But again, it's not a big shader, it just is a very pretty blue-green. Remember how I said the new ink Suigyoku is just like a really close color to Shinryoku? Well, this is Shinryoku and let's take a look. On Tomoa River paper on the left here is Suigyoku written with a soft, fine medium. And on the right is Shinryoku with a broad nib. And they look really close. The Shinryoku on the right, which is the older ink, is kind of a green that leans a lot to the blue side. But the Suigyoku is a lot more blue. And here's a picture of the open bottles, the Suigyoku on the left and the Shinryoku on the right, just like on the writing. And they do look pretty close, though it does seem like the Shinryoku sheens a lot more. Even looking at the labels on the bottles, the Suigyoku on the left and the Shinyoku on the right, the Shinyoku is more green and the Suigyoku has got a lot more blue on it. And I feel that's a pretty accurate representation other than the Shinyoku is a little bit more blue than the label shows. And then looky looky little cookie, 
when you take a look at the chromatographies, it was really difficult not to get them mixed up with each other because they looked so similar. The Hotaru B was a bit of a nightmare. Here you can see I had it in a Pilot Custom 74 and it looks slightly like an apple green, but that wasn't the color. It must have had a little bit of ink left in that pen. And then I super cleaned it out and now it looks very yellow when I logged it into my ink journal. And it's still, I, I, was, I was nervous that I had more ink in there. I must have cleaned that pen like five times. And here with the word yellow, I just finally used a glass pen because I felt like that was just the cleanest way to, to look at the color. It was such a light yellow that any bit of other kind of ink was going to mess with it for a bit. And you can see here, this is the glass pen and it looks like it has some green and like muddy color stuff in it. This is on Tomoa River paper, and since it was just so light, I just didn't want to hurt my eyes trying to read it. So I went on to test it on Takasago Premium Bank paper, and the thing about that paper, it makes like colors pop. It's a very strange ink, and here on this big ink swatch, you can see it just changes color. I guess it's like shading when you have more ink on it but there really isn't any separation. So this is not a chromo shading ink. This is a flat out shading ink that just kind of shades weird. But on Takasago, I felt like with a medium nib, it was quite readable. And the chromatography was green and yellow with some orange, I think to muddy it up a bit. And then it got even more muddy looking on Graffilo paper. And it also shaded and separated out more so that it was almost like you saw like no letter and then really dark letter. So the shading was almost a little bit distracting on Graffilo paper. All three of these inks meet the Yodoshizuku standards. They write very smoothly. They're semi-wet. They're very easy to clean. They are interestingly going a different direction than a lot of the other inks. There wasn't any heavy shading or sheening and definitely no chroma shading at all. The Hana Ikata does fill a little bit of a gap for people who like very light ink, so it's a very light corally pink. I really didn't understand the Hotaru B, but I was talking to Jacob and he said Athena's lemon ink is very popular, so maybe I'm just missing something there. And then the Suigyoku is a nice turquoisey blue green. So these are a nice addition to the Idoshizuku line. But now we're going to go in a different direction and go to some crazy earrings. Recently, Sailor came out with a new line of nine different inks called Yurameku. And every single one of them is a chromo shader. I'm not going to hold it to as high a standard as I did the Ido Shizuku because these are just kind of play inks. These inks, along with other chromo shading inks, are called Yu Shoku Inku. Yu, which is that first kanji, is the kanji for play. And then the second kanji there is the kanji for color. Here you can see it's the first kanji for Ido Shizuku. And this part is just Inku, which means ink. So the chromo shading inks and other fancy glass pen only inks and a lot of the inks for the Inkunuma ladies over here in Japan are Yushoku ink. They're made to have fun with and not necessarily to, I think, be reliable or good inks. So I'm just going to have some fun with it and not worry too much about how finicky they are. Inside the box of ink comes this like little explanation with four little stickers with the name of the ink on it. And you're supposed to put it right there on your converter so you can tell what ink you have inside of your pen. I thought that was a little weird. You're supposed to put it there on the shiny part of the converter. And of course it needs to be a sailor converter. These are done on Tomoe River paper. It's Sailor Yurameku ink, and this one is Kitsune Biori. This one is unusual in that it's warmer colors. It's gray and brown, and most of the other chroma shaders are like here. I've got three other inks that I'll be showing you, but um, they're all like in the cool colors with pink and maybe green or blue or purple. 
So this is one of the rare chroma shaders I've seen with this kind of color palette. And here it is on side by side on the left hand side, it's Takasago Premium Paper. You can see it kind of made it more brown and less gray. And it has a very typical looking chromo shading chromatography with pink, orange, blue, and brown and kind of that spread out look. And here you can see my cleanup splotches and it looks like some sort of coloring out of an old Max Hedrum video. And next up is Kangyo, Itezora, and Byakuya. These all chroma shade with a little bit of purple, gray, and green, and pink, with Kangyo being more purple as the main color, Itezora being more blue the main color, and Byakuya being more pink the main color. These colors look and behave like your typical chromo shaders. But on Takasago Premium Bank Paper, it kind of flips. Everything turns out green. It maintains a purpley gray blue color only on the really dark splotches there. It's like it kind of sucked up those colors initially and then just left the green on top. And on these big splotches, you can still see a little bit of pink chromo shading there. So you'll have to keep that in mind when you use Takosago Premium Bank Paper. But the really weird thing is all the chromatography too. Kangyo, Itezora, and Byakuya all came out with exactly the same chromatography, which tells me they probably just tweak it a little bit to get the different base colors. These inks behave just like typical chroma shaders were. And when I filled up my Pilot Parallel 1.5s, it was just really hard to get the ink to first start coming out. And I just kind of kept the pens upside down. I could put them in upside down into a cup so that they would just drain down into the nib. I tell people to enjoy a chroma shader the most. You probably want to put it in as wide a nib as you can so you can allow the different colors to separate. But I had a good friend ask me what chroma shader works in, you know, a fine nib. And, and they are going to be more touchy inside of a fountain pen, especially some of the thinner nibs. So I thought I would test out using a little bit of white lightning to see if I could get it to flow a little bit better and see if it affected the color separation. I've got a whole video dedicated to ink additives and you can link up to it in the right hand corner here. You could also try plain dish detergent instead of white lightning. Since Itezora seemed like it was the darkest color, I went ahead and used that. And I'm just putting some inside of a ink puddle. Whenever you use an ink additive, just make sure you put it separately from your main bottle. Then you want to use just a very, very small amount. So what I'm going to do is just drip a little bit onto a, a plant syringe tip. You can see me dripping it here. And just touch it to the surface there and mix it in. Some people use a toothpick, but I didn't have a toothpick. When I wrote with it with a glass pen, it felt a lot smoother using it with the white lightning than it did when I just used it straight with a glass pen earlier. So I put it in my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Ama Oto Harusame, which is a very trendy pen. So I'm putting this trendy ink in the trendy pen. And I'm just going to have to use a blunt tip syringe in order to uh, fill it. And it flowed out pretty easily and it wrote nice and smooth. That worked so well, I decided to try it with the Flex, which is sometimes difficult with the Chroma Shading ink, and it seemed to work out pretty good. This is how the fine nib looked dried. It doesn't have a real lot of separation. And dried for the Flex, and you can see now you start to pick up some of that Chroma Shading there a lot more. And then here's the splotch. I wanted to make sure that it still was able to separate out, and it looks very close to the ink that I splotched out without the ink additive. So I don't think the ink additive changed uh, the properties of the ink that much. So I think Sailor's Yurameku line of chromo shading inks is a nice addition to the uh, fun ink side of things. So just, you know, you, you'll have fun with them, but just don't expect them to, you know, not be finicky. And the winner for the Pilot Vintage Stainless Steel Pen from the Tips video 
is Buttercream Lux. Please contact me on messages on Instagram. If you got something out of this video, I'd appreciate either a like or a share or a subscribe. It'll really help me out. Thanks. And next week's video is going to be a doozy. It's all about very strange nibs. I'll see you then.